This video is brought to you by the passionate photographers at DxO Labs. A lot of y'all been asking for an alternative to Adobe Lightroom, Lightroom Classic. Mostly the subscription fees. Like 20 bucks a month doesn't sound bad, except you do the math for the rest of your life, and pretty soon you're paying over $10,000, depending on how long you want to live. But Adobe also has serious privacy concerns with their cloud storage and their artificial intelligence. They're literally telling people to skip the photo shoot and just generate images. You asked me for an alternative, and I found it. I'm going to show you DxO Photo Lab 8 right now. With a few clicks, your pictures will go from this to this, from this to this, and you just buy it. No subscriptions, no cloud storage. If you do buy it, use our link and our coupon code, and that will actually save you some money. Let's get right into it. First of all, there's no catalogs that you have to generate. When you open up Photo Lab 8, you can just go right into your files, just click a folder, and you'll just see the pictures within that folder. If you want to organize your photos outside of folders, just create projects and project groups, and then you can organize them however you want. In the photo library, you can see thumbnails for the folder you've selected. You can search for things here by rating or file name or keywords or whatever. And as you select things, you can see all the metadata shows up really nicely here. You have a histogram here. If you want to edit it, just click customize up here. And now you have a ton of editing tools available to you. I'm not going to try to show you all the editing tools. It's very powerful, but also really easy to use. So let's just first take a look at this eagle photo. The first thing I'm going to want to do is to crop it. I'll just click that and let's scale it in, pan it over, enter. You can adjust the exposure here. But I really like DxO Smart Lighting, which is just a single slider, which just does stuff intelligently the way you want. So I'll get that where I want, and now I can go through and adjust the exposure. Let's bring the highlights of the sky in the background down a little bit, and let's restore black point and a little bit of contrast. I love the three contrast sliders here. We have overall contrast, which is the traditional slider. But then we have micro contrast, which especially for wildlife photography adds a lot of texture and then fine contrast. So you can kind of adjust these three sliders to get all the different textures that you want. Now let's compare it to the original image. Okay, wow, what a difference, right? Let's zoom in. Now, all my processing has added some noise to the sky here, but DxO has the best denoising technology around. I'm going to pick their highest quality, which is the Deep Prime XD2S. Then I can just fine tune it a little bit. Force details will just make sure I keep all of that detail in there. Just a few clicks and I'm happy with the image. Look how easy it is to share. Right click, export, and then airdrop messages, add to photos so I can airdrop it directly to my phone. In Lightroom, you would have been saving the file to a folder and then opening the folder and then airdropping the file. It just would have taken a bunch more clicks. Let's look at a drone photo. Drones have really small cameras with notoriously bad image quality, but DxO has some technology that drastically improves the drone photos beyond what any other processor can do. So here's a photo I took of my neighborhood with this gorgeous thundercloud over it. But you can see it's just way too contrasty. Again, I'm going to use the DxO smart lighting here and just I'm just going to crank that up and reduce the contrast a little bit. Now let's make an adjustment brush. I'm going to make a graduated filter here so I can adjust the sky and the ground separately. I'll drag that here and then I'll just pull that up here. I want it to be nice and soft so it looks natural. This is very similar to the results you would get if you could have used a graduated neutral density filter on your drone because this is about real photography, not about AI nonsense. And now I can just bring the exposure on the sky down some. And while I'm here, I'm going to just amplify the intensity of it with Clearview Plus and a little contrast and a little micro contrast. And what I'm trying to do is to bring back the actual look of the sky that I saw with my eye rather than what the fairly small camera on the drone was capable of capturing. While we're here, let's just bring out those pinks and oranges a little bit because that little camera just didn't capture it the way I remember it. But the sun was setting and it really lit up the top of that cloud and that's really the focal point of the image. Let's look at the before and after. <laughs> okay, that is dramatic. You can see DxO's geometry correction took out the ugly vignetting that happens in the corner. It fixed the contrast problems and just produced something beautiful out of what would have been almost nothing few other really easy tools. Like, let's make sure this horizon is level, because my drones don't always make themselves completely level. If you ever need quick access to a tool, you can just search for it in this 
upper box here. So I'll search for horizon, I'll grab the tool, and then I can just put these points right on the horizon and it'll rotate and crop it for me. Now I wanna do a little sharpening, try to correct the flaws in this image. So let's click detail here. They have what's called the lens softness compensation. Most sharpening applies the same way throughout the entire image, but lenses are sharper in the center. They're less sharp on the corners. DxO is the only company I know of that does this right. They actually adjust the sharpening for the softness of that particular lens. So I'll adjust these to get the details the way I want them. And if we turn that off and on, you can see it really restored a lot of detail that the drone just lost. And if I wanted to make an actual print of this, I could just do file print and send it directly to my printer. You can see, you can select color profiles, cha change the layout of it, adjust the margins, whatever you need. No need to jump to a separate app to do printing. Let's take a look at a portrait. This portrait of Chelsea is really challenging. It's backlit during the sunset. It was taken with an older camera, a 5D Mark II. So let's go in and see how DxO can improve it. Well, well, first, let's look at what it looked like before their default changes. As I slide the before and after slider here, you can see DxO automatically corrected some of these straight lines. And look at the way her leg gets sort of misshapen because of the bloom and the highlights here. With DxO's automatic settings, they pretty much fix it and restore her leg to a normal shape. If I wanna reduce the contrast some, the smart lighting is an easy way to do that. And then let's raise the exposure a little bit to get her a little bit brighter. What about presets? There's a bunch built in and you can make your own too. I'll hit the preset here and you can see previews of everything just really easy right in front of you. I love these DxO Film Pack designer presets. Oh, I think I'm gonna choose beauty here. That gave it a little bit of a vintage look. It added a little bit of real film grain from the film pack designers. They're incredible. And if you flip back and forth between the two, we go from a digital look to a real film look. What about this vent here? I hate that vent. They have tools to remove things if you want to use them. Go to the Band-Aid tool here, draw over it, and it's gone. Flipping between the before and after, you can see we have a much more stylish picture in literally just a few seconds. Let's take a look at this landscape photo that we took in the fjords of Norway. This is before DxO's automatic corrections and this is after. You can see it solved the lens's vignetting, evened out the lighting across the frame, and now I can just go through the sliders to make this a little bit more dramatic. The smart lighting feature here, I'll just grab it and pull that down and you can see the highlights from the clouds just come back and Clearview Plus is gonna work really well here to add just a little bit of intensity without making it look fake. If I want a little more texture in here, I can up the micro contrast and the fine contrast without overdoing it. And I wanna raise the shadows up to bring out the detail in the bottom half of the picture, but I don't wanna make the top half look bad. So again, one of my favorite tools, just that graduated filter. I'm just gonna make it nice and big so you don't notice the changes and then I can just raise the exposure a little bit. Look at the before and after. The before is flat with way too much contrast and the after is realistic. It's much more like what I remember. It is a real photo that captures what my eye saw, not what the limits of my camera were able to provide. That's what Photolab does. It's a tool made by passionate photographers to bring out the best in the photos that you already have, to not get in the way of the photographic process, but to supplement it. It is a tool for people who pursue photographic perfection. DxO Photo Lab 8 is really the right tool for most photographers, photographers who are passionate perfectionists, but don't wanna mess with cloud storage, monthly fees, artificial intelligence, Head to this link and, and you can get a completely free trial, no credit card or anything like that. And if you do love it, use our coupon code and that will save you a few dollars off. In the comments down below, tell me your own experiences with DxO and Photo Labs. I'd love to hear what you think of it. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials, photo news, camera reviews, and much more. Bye.